Okay, everybody, welcome back to Flam Rouge. Let's keep bicycling. Okay, so uh, we're about to start the second round. Uh, Jen's up front. Let's, uh, let's figure out what she's going to do first. So she's got to pick for her roller or her sprinter, and then she picks for the other one. Since the sprinter is behind, let's go on ahead and pick for him first. Let's see what she draws. A nine, a five, a four, and a five. Okay. So again, nine is the sprint. That is the fastest in the game. That and so it's interesting since you got a nine. I mean, the, as a general rule, I mean the rules of real life cycling kind of apply here. I mean, you want to save your best cards for that final push across the finish line after you've made it past the tough stuff. But Jen's again, it wouldn't hurt. She wouldn't mind being able to break away from the pack earlier before she gets to that mountain, since she did pull the nine. Yeah, what the heck? Let's let's get a little let's get a little risky early on. Jen, her sprinter is going to go for a nine. All right, that's going to be crazy. Now let's see what her roller has: a three, a seven, a six, or a three and a four. Ugh. Let's see. Now there's two spaces different. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ideally, we would like to have her roller do a five, um, one, two, three, four, five, because then they would be able to slipstream perfectly together. But did not get a five, so that's a problem. But that's okay. Um, well, yeah, I mean, so Jen's pretty sure her sprinter is going to be out in the lead, um, you know, in front of everybody because she's making this big push. But um, and that means she's going to end up taking some exhaustion because she pushed so hard. Uh, I think for her roller, she'll go on ahead and play a four, and hopefully she'll be able to slipstream off of what I'm doing by you know not falling too far behind. She doesn't want to fall too far behind her teammate, so we'll see how that goes. All right, and the rest goes in the discard pile. Right. So Jen's made her plans. Meanwhile, while she was doing hers, I was making mine. And I will go on ahead, and my sprinter's in the back, so let's go on ahead and take a look at him. He's got a four, uh, also a nine. You got, you got three of each value, a three twos, three threes, three fours, three fives, and three nines. And um, let's see here. So all the way here in the back, do I want to push for nine as well, or do I want to save them for later? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. You know, I mean, only moving forward five, hopefully, that means I, you know, would still be able to slipstream off somebody else. What the heck? Let's, uh, let's not go crazy. Let's just have my sprinter play a five. The rest go into the discard pile. All right. Or they get recycled. And now let's see what my roller's got up his sleeve. One, two, three, four. All right. Now I've already forgotten what I played for my sprinter. I went for a five. So my sprinter's going to end up one, two, three, four, five. He's going to end up right there. Um, which, if I play a five for my roller, he'll be two ahead, and that means my sprinter could slipstream. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So, five and five. All right, and so these get discarded, and everybody is now chosen. Let's see um, how this is. Oh, everybody reveals what's going to happen. And we resolve these in order. So Jen's roller is first up, is moving four. One, two, three, four. And then my roller is moving five. One, two, three, four. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Five. Uh, can't take there, but we'll just go on ahead, neck and neck. That's unfortunate. Um, if I'd chosen a four, then I wouldn't have to take any exhaustion. But well, we'll, we'll see how it works out because I haven't figured out. All right. So now Jen's sprinter is in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that did not work out well for Jen. Jen was hoping that I would have pushed a little bit farther forward because if I'd gone one more space, then, um, you know, and Jen was hoping I'd be able to slipstream, she would have gotten a free boost off of me, but unbeknownst to her, I didn't push as hard. So um, now both of Jen's guys are getting exhaustion, as is mine. And now finally, my sprinter way back here also gets a five. One, two, three, four, five. And hey, at least I planned that well. So all of these cards, are removed from the game, all are gone, and um, we do some slipstream. Whee! Okay, so I got a little extra boost, and this guy won't get exhausted, but if this had been an eight, everybody would have slipped up, but as it is, so that's bad. Both of Jen's riders are going to get some exhaustion now, and my roller is also going to get some exhaustion, but my sprinter is okay. So that was that. Uh, Daisy heard something, and she's got to go investigate. Oh, Daisy, keep us safe. All right, so that was it. Let's move on to another round, and we're very quickly one, two, three, four, five, six spaces away from the mountain. All right.
Let's have Jen go first. And, hmm, yeah, she is not happy about her sprinter. Uh, let's see what her roller can do first. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, her roller's got a big old seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, right. So now here's the interesting thing. Oh, actually, wait, it was one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the interesting thing is the function of going uphill is cards uh, that are greater than five are useless. So if you're trying to go up a hill and you play a nine, you're only going to move five spaces. And by the same token, if Jen were to play a six right now, which you get her one, two, three, four, five, six, it would get her on the hill, it won't work because sixes, if, I mean, if at any point during your turn you are going uphill, that card is capped at a five. So if Jen played a six right now, she'd get here, she wouldn't be able to use that extra space. So a six for her sprinter is not very good. I mean, a five for her sprinter to get her right there wouldn't be bad. Um, so, if, we're, if she is hoping that her sprinter is going to end up right here as a 5, then we want her roller to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That means the roller won't be uh, um, advancing at all. Uh, because Well, he got his highest. His highest was a 7. This is as far as the roller could go. So, hmm. so this is less than ideal. We can't really um, you know, take advantage of slipstreaming. So then, do we um, say, what the heck, let's maybe have the roller move the 7 to go out in front and then have the, the, uh, the sprinter slow down uh, as the roller. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 would be here. But a sprinter, well, the sprinter does have 2s. So if the sprinter only moved forward 2, he'd get a free bonus move and wouldn't be tired. And that would be a great opportunity to get rid of a 2 at, at an opportune moment. But what are the chances we're going to draw a 2? Now, of course, we already have one 2 here. Now, you're able to look through your discarded cards anytime you want. So, um, yeah, so far, the sprinter hasn't played any of his twos. That, oh, oh, no, I'm looking at the roller. The, the, uh, yeah, the sprinter hasn't played any. No, the sprinter has um, played or has discarded. I'm, sure, I'm sorry, I didn't mean play. Discarded a two. So that means there's two more twos in here. So there's a pretty good chance that the sprinter is going to draw a two. So I think that's pretty good. Let's have the roller play the seven so that he'll take the lead. All right. And then the rest of the stuff gets discarded. And now let's see what, if the sprinter gets one of those twos that we're hoping for. There it is. Three. All right. So he's going to play his two, um, you know, making the best use of it, getting three movement out of a two. The rest gets discarded. Right. And so that was it for uh, Jen. Now, of course, meanwhile, I'm still thinking about what I'm going to do here. And um, now, coming around to this corner, I can stop. I can, in addition to thinking about making sure my guys are working well together so I can slipstream, I can really start thinking about what Jen might get up to as well. Uh, because we know there's basically this hard wall coming. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, I know Jen, the most she could move, she could get her roller up here so that it's right on the edge. Um, so that means, you know, if I think we're, if she's going fast, I think she's going to push right up to the edge. Then maybe I want to get my roller or my sprinter here, which is um, one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven in the case of my sprinter. But I mean, that might not be the case. Jen might not push right up to the front. I mean, heck, Jen has just taken two exhaustion, three exhaustion cards so far. She doesn't want to stay in the front. Maybe she's going to slow down. In which case, maybe I should slow down too because I don't want to be in front because then I'm going to get exhaustion. But if I get far enough in front, then, um, you know, but, but no, I, there's no way I can get far enough in front that I would be able to break away from her such that she wouldn't be able to slipstream off me. So if I get into the front, chances are Jen's taking a small step. She'll get a slipstream as well. So then maybe I decide to just to stay back. Let her take all the headwinds. So if, I'm, if that's what I'm going for, let's go on ahead and see what my sprinter can pull off. Yeah, a 9, and a 3, and a 4, and another 9. Oh, well, that sprinter, he wants to sprint. Um, which would put him 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right up to the edge. Huh. And um, let's see, if my roller, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, my roller does have 6s, and has my roller played? In, let's see, there's one of my roller's 6s. And has my roller played a six? No. So chances are pretty good that my roller, chances are pretty good I'm going to draw a six for the roller. So if I go for a nine and a six, then I can get some slipstreaming. And if Jen slowed down, although that's the thing, you know, if I get here and here and then I slipstream, if Jen's here, she'll just ride me right up to the edge. I'm not crazy about that. Hmm. 
Or do I slow down? Do I just go for four with the sprinter? One, two, three, four. Put myself right there. Try to put the roller right here. Yeah, let's just keep it simple. Let's, let's save the big cards for later. I'm just going to have my sprinter move up four. Right. Or actually, maybe even three. One, two, three. Yeah, let's have him move three. Let's just get rid of these weak cards. Let's have him move a three. And then we uh, recycle the rest. And now let's see what the roller's got. A four, a four, a three, and a three. Oh, he is not going very fast this time. So uh, right now my sprinter's going to one, two, three. Uh, and my roller at a one, two, three, four. Yeah, a roll. Okay, that's going to work out fine. Let's have the roller do a four. Let's see how, how, what, let's see what comes of that. Okay, everybody reveals. Which is very slow and arduous when you only have one hand. And who's up front? It's Jen's um, 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 sprinter. You can tell. Like I said, it's impossible to spot the little R's and the S's on there. It's kind of a shame that... Well, anyway. But what you can do, what you just get into the habit of doing is, look for the guy who's standing versus the guy who's sitting. That's usually pretty easy to spot the difference. The guy who's standing, he's the sprinter, because he's standing. He's going to push hard. So Jen's sprinter is up first, and he's taking it easy. He's taking a chill pill. Only one, two. Now we've got Jen's roller. They're neck and neck, but she's in the, he's in the right lane, so he's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and made the big push. Hmm, I was expecting Jen to slow down a little bit, and um, I played accordingly, but Jen pushed a bit harder. Let's see how it works out for me. My roller is up first. He's going to go one, two, three, four. Ugh. All right, so there will be no slipstreaming for him. Um, but hey, no headwinds either. And then my, sp uh, my sprinter is going to go one, two, three. And oh, I like how that worked out, folks. Okay, once again. So, we, uh, we, we've gotten rid of all our cards, the ones we played. Now, now we're seeing some interesting slipstreaming. This pack slipstreams up one space, and then this whole pack. So, once again, Jen is the only one, her roller, because you can tell because he's sitting down, and you know, he's, he's kind of sitting down or leaning in and pushing. Jen just took another exhaustion card, and everybody else is doing great. Ugh! Okay, I am definitely outplaying Jen at this point. And as you can see, we're starting to get low on our cards. Pretty soon, we're going to have to... Um, reshuffle our deck, at which point these exhaustions that are building up, especially for Jen, are going to come into play. Okay, and there's no avoiding it. It's time to hit the hill. And like I said, what, if at any point during movement you are on the hill, um, you are, your movement is capped at five. And then the other thing, this little icon reminds us that we cannot slipstream. If at any point you are on the hill, um, you cannot slipstream. So, uh, either to um, you know, provide cover for somebody else or to slip ahead to somebody else. Slipstreaming is just turned off once you hit that hill. All right, and so Jen is up. Well, no, we're, again, we're both up. We're all choosing in secret what we're going to do. Um, you know, so Jen plays a five, one, two, three, four, five. She won't quite make it to the top of the hill. She can't play a six or a, she can play a six or a seven, but this is as far as her roller will go. And so. That's unfortunate, um, because that means the following turn, guaranteed, she is going to be on the hill as well. Um, but, but, oh no, it's not the end of the world, because the interesting thing is, um, you know, if she's here on the following turn, when she hits the downhill, things change. Oh no, but no, they don't, they don't. Um, the, the uphill is, at any point during your turn, you get affected by the hill. The downhill is, if you start your turn on the downhill, it doesn't matter what you play, you will move at least five, guaranteed. So that's the thing. You know, Jen shows she's going to have to spend two turns on this hill, no matter what. So how is she going to play that? Well, let's see. Let's take a look at what her sprinter has in mind. A three, a nine, a three. Um, and deck is empty, so it's time to reshuffle. So it's time to put the decks down, everybody. All right, so everybody's going to have to reshuffle. Let's just reshuffle everybody really quick. And, um, oops, and hey, how did a roller exhaustion get in here? Uh, I just drew from the wrong deck. There we go. Uh, yeah, so, all right, so reshuffling. Got to reshuffle all everybody. Well, I might as well reshuffle everybody's decks because everybody's going to be um, right. So, because uh, Jen's other deck has got three, and here's where all that exhaustion is. Ouch. So, oh man. Uh, so, I, I put both of these cards in the wrong decks. I just got them a little mixed up there. Oopsie doops. 
All right. And let's look at mine. Yep, three here. So, shuffle, 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 never a kerfuffle. All right, I didn't get any card discards wrong there. And shuffling my other deck. Just so I'm doing it all at once, so you don't have to watch me do it one at a time. Okay. Obviously, normally you'd play it out, but it's, it's functionally the same thing. All right. So, uh, Jen's Roller. Didn't get one of those exhaustions. Okay. So, how is Jen going to play this? Um, right. And this is her Roller. So, she goes three. One, two, three. That puts her in the middle of the mountain. And then on her next turn, if she plays a five, one, two, or a four. So, yeah, I think, you know, it's a hill. She's just going to slow the heck down. She's going to, her... Um, her roller is going to be a four. You're going to save this nine and this three and this five for later. All right, and let's see what her sprinter has in mind. And remember, there's no worry about jockeying for position or anything like that because there will be no slipstreaming on this hill. So she could play these sixes, but that's but it would cap out at a five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, if she plays the three, one, two, three, well, she'll be on the hill. And then a five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you know what? She's just going to slow the truck down. All right. Which is not surprising. And then she's hoping next turn she'll get a five for her roller. I mean, but she just, I mean, heck, maybe she'll get all those exhaustions. And that means she'll be stuck on this hill longer than she might otherwise like. It's a bit of a gamble. But on the flip side, she doesn't want to waste one of her sixes. So I guess she'll take the gamble. Meanwhile, me, I'm a little bit further back in the pack. Let's see what I've got in store. Let's take a look at my sprinter. A two, that's not a good time. Oh, dude, you, you got to speed up. You got to hit the hill. He's clearly terrified of the hill. So my best is a five. One, two, three, four, five. That'll get me on the hill. Yeah, let's just have my, um, my sprinter touch the hill. All right, because then if I get on the hill, then a five will get me through it on the next turn with the most efficiency. And let's see, my, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that was my sprinter, right? One, two, three, four, five. Is that what I just played for him? Yeah, all right. So now let's see what my roller's got. A six, a seven. Oh, come on, show me a low card. <gasps> oh no, I have to waste a card. Well, then I'm not wasting a seven. I'll waste one of my sixes. Shoot. All right. So these get discarded. Here's what I'm playing. Everybody reveals. And let's get going. Jen's um, roller is up first. One, two, three. Card is gone. Her sprinter goes. One, two, three. Card is gone, and he will not be exhausted. Next up is my roller at six. One, but it's going to be a five because he's going to hit the hill. One, two, three, four, five, and even though it's a six, he stops right there. Oh, yeah, but I mean, he just felt the need for speed, folks. There's nothing I could do. So, um, you know, he's hit the headwind, and now my sprinter goes five. One, two, three, four, five, and everybody is all bunched up on the hill. Okay, um, you know. And again, even if we were back here, there would be no slipstreaming because you cannot slipstream onto somebody. If we were like this, there would be no slipstreaming. But we are all just packed up here like sardines, and both of our rollers take an exhaustion because they're in the front of the pack. Okay, next round. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's uh, we've been continuing. Let's continue with Jen. Let's uh, let's let's figure out what her roller is going to do first. Hopefully, he can get off of this hill. All right. Um, now remember, okay, good. No high cards. Um, so, uh, okay, I, well, he's got to play this three because if you only, or the four, because if he only plays a three, he will spend another turn on the hill. So this roller is, um, oh, oh, no, no. Oh, we're looking at the sprinter. Oopsie, I drew the wrong. All right, so we're doing the sprinter who is in the back. Ouch. Shoot. All right, well, the sprinter is going to be on this hill for a while. Darn it. All right. Now the roller who is in front. Two. Oh, and there's some exhaustion, folks. Three, four. Just clogging up the deck. Um, I mean, I wouldn't mind playing it right now to get, but I mean, I want to get. Yeah, okay, let's just play the five. Get them off the hill. Although, here's the problem getting him off the hill, next turn, he's going to go at least five, and my other guy's still on the hill. The team is going to get split up. And that's not good. Because they're a team. they got to stick together. Because they can never count on strip sleeping off of anybody else. But you can always count on slip sleeping on your teammate. Unless, of course, your teammate is still stuck on the mountain while you zip way on ahead. Ooh. You know what? Actually, then to heck with it. 
Let's get rid of this exhaustion right now. Let's have both my guy, uh, Jen says both of her guys, if one's on the, stuck on the mountain, the other is stuck on the mountain. All right, so that's Jen's choice, my choice. Let's see, let's have my roller who's up front take a look. Oh, why did I do that? I should have looked at my sprinter who was in the back. All right, what do we got? This six is really only a five. Um, let's see, now my sprinter needs a one, two, three, four, five. I got the same problem. Why did I not look at the sprinter first? I was not playing very smart. Um, because I can definitely, I could burn a six, which is a bit wasteful, to get on the other side. It'll be one, two, three, four, five. So next turn, he'll take off. Even if I play a two, he'll take way off. But um, the question is, is my sprinter going to make it? I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to take a gamble. I may regret this. I'm going to play this four for my roller, which is going to be one, two, three, four. He's making it. He's going down the other side of this hill next turn. Now, here's another thing I got to bear in mind as well. For all I know, now I'm looking at this space, Jen might take this space. Um, you know, in which case, even if my guy gets the five he needs to get here, he might not make it because Jen might take that space. So this is really risky. There's a good chance that my sprinter is going to get stuck on this hill. And I have just set up my roller to say to heck with it, and I'm, I'm so long, sucker. Uh, which means if he just stays out in the headwinds, he'll just get more and more exhausted and he'll end up slowing down and everybody will catch back up with him. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to go for it. I'm taking a chance. Right. So uh, he's made his choice. The rest get discarded. And now let's see what my sprinter is up to. I want to see a five or heck, even a six. And I ought and to use it. Oh, but not a nine. Oh, no. There is no way I'm playing one of my precious nines to, um, because again, it'll be pegged at a five. There's no way I'm playing these. So I'm playing a four. Oh, that is not what I wanted to see. Everybody reveals, took a chance and everybody's going kind of slow. I think this is going to work out better for Jen because at least she burned some exhaustion on here. All right. So who's in the lead? Uh, we got tied, but the right lane is, uh, goes first. So Jen's roller is up. He's going to go one, two. And he has shook it off. He is no longer exhausted. One less card in the deck. And now my roller goes, and he's going four. One, two, three, four. And slides over to the right lane. If there's nobody there, you always slide over to the right lane. And now Jen's sprinter is going to go one, two, three, four. Hey, at least he, I mean, at least Jen's not picking up any exhaustion. That's pretty nice. And now finally, my other guy's going four. One, two, three, four. Boom. I did not make it across the line, and now this guy's about to take off. Oh, well, he doesn't have to, but oh, it's such a huge waste of potential. Because, I mean, no matter, even if I play a two with him, he's gonna go, there's no stopping him. He will go at least five. One, two, three, four, five. But my other guy could go one, two, three. Okay, yeah, it's not the end of the world. We could still slipstream out of it. All right. So anyway, that's that. And now both of my guys take an exhaustion, and Jen, for a change, does not. Jen likes seeing that. Okay, moving on to the next round. Uh, let's figure, let's see what my sprinter is capable of doing. Um, oops, and that card got eliminated. Sprinter pulls a two, a five, a four, and a nine. Not using that nine, not because again, he's on the hill. So the bet that he's he's tapped out at a five. Um, so if he just goes ahead and takes the five, he'll he won't take advantage of the downhill at all. One, two, three, four, five. But my other guy, he could potentially slipstream. Yeah, let's let's push it. Let's waste the downhill. Because again, you know, if I only play the two, the next turn he'll be here. And then if I play another two, he could go really far. But to heck with it. We're just we're just gonna blow right through this thing. My sprinter is um, taking the five. Is that what I just said? Yes, taking the five. All right. Yeah. All right, and let's see. Now my roller, he's, oh, his muscles are getting weak. Okay, so my guy's going to be one, two, three, four, five. And ideally, I'd like my roller to be up here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. But nope, um, I don't have a... Six. If I'd had a six, I would play it right now. But you know what? Since I don't have the perfect one for slipstreaming, I'm just going to get rid of this exhaustion. I'm going to coast down this hill and discard all these. There we go. All right. And meanwhile, what's Jen looking at? Let's look at her roller in the back. Hey, some more exhaustion. Ooh, wow. He's, he's really beat. Well, again, he's not a hill. There's no way I'm using one of these sevens. So you better believe he's going to play a two. Um, which means it's gonna, he's going to be on the other side of the hill. 
Uh, so next turn, he'll take advantage. So I think we want the sprinter. I mean, it'd be kind of nice to keep them both together. Let's see what happens. All right, one, two, three, four. You know what? What the heck? Let's just go on ahead, and Jen's just going to barely eke her way over that hill. Okay. Everybody reveal, and she um, will hopefully get to take advantage of that on the following turn by getting some more twos, some more exhaustions and whatnot. Okay, there we go. Everybody reveals. Who's in the front? My roller. He's going to go. One, two. Bye bye exhaust. Oh, wait. No, no, no. No, no, no. He's on the hill. One, two, three, four, five. So that was very nice. Now, um, Jen's sprinter is just going to go one, two. Next turn, she's going to get that burst of speed. Then my sprinter, who is five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. No slipstreaming, but hey, at least only one of them gets exhausted. And now Jen's other guy goes one, two. And he's not exhausted. All right. So that was it. And now, um, well, it's interesting. They could slipstream, but since there's two spaces between us, there will be no guaranteed movement. Um, but the hill is in our rear view mirror, and now we're going to head. And now, now that there is this much space, if I can, I want to push both my guys hard to keep that gap. Because I don't want Jen, I mean, because if I can keep that gap, Jen's not going to be slipstreaming off of me. So this is an opportunity. The question is, will the cards be amenable? Um, and, you know, the answer is, hey, it's a deck builder. We're going to have to start um, shuffling up our deck again. But I think I'm going to stop right there because, there, I mean, I, I've done as I promised. I've shown the hills, and there's this early breakaway. This is my chance. Um, although the downside to breaking away is my guys are just going to get more and more exhausted. At least I'll keep them slipstreaming if I can stay away from Jen. But what will happen is eventually they'll get over here and this hill will slow. And this is a long one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a murderous hill. And so that's going to slow me right back down, giving Jen a chance to catch up. And then once we both push back here, hopefully we will have saved our nines and our sevens to push for the final across the finish line. But I'm going to stop right there, folks, and that should give you a pretty good idea of what Flam Rouge is all about. And now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner of the screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.